Well, let's look lastly at this whole issue of death, its origin and its significance. When we look at what evolution tells us, death and struggle and pain, all are heroes to bring about the refinement of the complexity and diversity of life that we see all around us today. See, according to evolution, man came on the scene after billions and billions of years of death, after billions and billions and billions of things dying. Then man stepped on the scene. Now, does that make sense if we compare that to the Genesis account? I don't think so. In the Garden of Eden, as we know, on day six, God said when he made everything, he made it very good, right? Well, look at what it shows here. Here we have Eve saying, oh, Adam, this is such a perfect world. And Adam says, yes, Eve, it is very good, just like God said. If we try to add those billions of years of death to this scenario, then the Garden of Eden would be built on a graveyard. Do you see how that doesn't fit at all? It doesn't make sense from the standpoint of God's word. What does the Bible tell us is the origin of sin and death? It says, therefore, just as through one man, we're talking about Adam, sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all have sinned. We see that again, man needs to, get to, to, to take the uh, responsibility for this, not God himself. Well, let's look real quick at the concept ideas have consequences. This is a very intriguing illustration that showed up in a book at the end of the 1800s. And it was intended as a spoof against Christians who were really concerned that if we took evolution, incorporated it into our faith, into our lives, into our society, it would have a devastating effect. At the very top, we see Christianity. The first thing that gets challenged is the Bible. The Bible isn't infallible, it's not inspired, it's simply written by a bunch of men. The next thing that, that begins to get eroded away is the idea that man is made in the image of God. We're not made in the image of God, we're simply just a bunch of animals. Then the whole idea of there are no miracles, the whole idea of naturalism. That if we can explain everything from a natural means now, there is no supernatural, there is no God. There's no virgin birth is the next step down this slippery slope. Take away the deity of Jesus Christ. Then there is no deity at all. There is no God. We add to that there's no atonement for sin because sin is just a religious notion, right? We've got genes and, you know, experience and backgrounds. That's what causes our behavior, not a sin issue. And then there's no resurrection, which means that there's no afterlife. And then we get into the whole issue of agnosticism and then atheism. At the very top here, we see a college student. Then the next one down is a liberal pastor. And then finally, we get an agnostic or an atheistic scientist. The sad thing over the last 150 years is that we have seen this kind of progression in our day.